Oh, what are y'all doing here? How'd you all show up all of a sudden? Well, I was just cleaning some guns. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you kind of caught me finishing up the AR-15 here, and you can see I have a table full of firearms to clean. Uh, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> How many people have written me and asked me to do more cleaning videos? So you'll be sorry. This is my revenge on all you folks. Uh, We've done several and uh, shown you at least how I clean, you know, various firearms, which may be exactly the opposite or quite different from a lot of other people, a lot of smart people, right? But uh, that's what I do. And uh, so since you've been asking so much and for years, I thought, you know what? I have all these firearms to clean and so many because we've done several videos this week and trying to keep our word on every day in April or every day in April word right and uh, uh, and then uh, also uh, two or three different videos required a table load of guns firearms really really it did just you'll see uh, when they're posted right not before they're posted, but you'll you'll see what I mean. And uh, so that's just the nature of it. And and uh, this has been like yesterday, a couple of the day before, and we've been really, really, really busy. And I just haven't gotten around to it now. I because I, I don't like that because I clean guns the the day I get them dirty, or the next morning, religiously. I really do. And we've talked about that, right? And uh, I just get at it. And if it's black powder, it'll have any option. I don't let those go. But I'll, I'll spray them down, soak them, and uh, when we finish, and then you know the next day come out in a more leisurely way, and you do a better job. You know, because we we wrap up uh, the lights right later in the day. Like right now, it's, it's too early, but it's kind of cloudy and a little few leaves on the tree. Sun will come and go. Sorry about that. But uh, I think most of it will be shady and the light will be good. And so by the time we finish up, it's maybe getting close to the end of the dark or end of day. And, and you, know, get, you know, upload the videos, get back in, get a shower, maybe eat and all that kind of thing. So it's just not a good time to launch into big cleaning usually. So I, I typically will do it the next morning. And I'll do a better job. That's the thing, because uh, I want to do a really good job. I don't want to do a hurry up, uh, you know, job on cleaning a firearm of any kind. And uh, so there you go. Anyway, ended up with more firearms this week than I think we ever have that needed to be cleaned. <laughs> and uh, I kind of knew uh, that you know I'm just going to spread these things out on the shooting table. I've got too many uh, to try to do it in my cluttered reloading room uh, bench and everything it's not cold nice weather and everything so I'm, I'm just gonna my plan has been for a day or two I'm just gonna spread them out on the shooting table uh, and and do it so here I am and uh, this is the AR the Colt uh, 6920 you haven't seen it for a while but you'll you'll be seeing it uh, almost forgot I had it and uh, Nice AR. Looks like that castle nut is loose. Huh. Uh, that's okay. I'd rather be loose and too tight. Man, I have uh, had trouble getting those things off before. So anyway, let me get at the cleaning. So that one's in good shape. All right. We're good with that, baby. I'll get it over here out of the way. Hope you can hear me okay. I, I turned the mic up a little bit. You know, we've made a mistake doing that a few times in videos. But, uh... Since I'm not going to be moving around, the mic's not going to be moving, I want you to hear all my brilliance. So, if I didn't say who I am, Hickok45, all right? And we have probably done, gosh, over the years, six, eight, you know, cleaning videos of various things, AR-15, AK, Revolver, I think 1911. And again, I, I'm just showing you how I do it, what I do what works for me and on all those firearms 
and I may even do something kind of wrong. I might miss a part or something, you know, even in the demonstration that I normally clean or that I clean the next time or, or something, I forget because I'm in the video and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a two hour video or something. Uh, but uh, not to make excuses, but just so you, you know, uh, nothing I do is the gospel. It's just what I do, okay? And I will say in my defense, uh, if some of you that are more experienced don't agree with something I do, how I shoot, how I uh, clean farms or whatever, it's worked for me for a long, long time, about 50 years. I don't know that I've had rust on a firearm, okay? And they keep working. As you know, in videos, it's rare we have problems. Uh, unless it's a new gun <laughs> that you know, just has an issue, but uh, or some ammo issue, which is really rare too, right? So my guns tend to work. If they don't, there's a reason other than the way I clean it or something I do. I might put something back together wrong. I don't know. Could happen. But anyway, so what I what I I just dragged all this stuff out here. My soft drink. Not alcoholic now. Even when you're not shooting, it's probably not a great idea. Well you know probably people do it and have a beer while they're cleaning it you near know, all the ammo somewhere else and they're not shooting. They're in the den, they're in the basement. And I don't know, that's, that's your choice. But you know, as we all know, alcohol and guns don't mix. I mean, any kind of substance, mind altering substance, okay, mood altering substance. Okay, so I, I may not get through this. I kind of keep track of time. We don't want to go for like four hours, literally. When did I start yakking at you? But uh, yeah, okay. But uh, what I typically do when I have this many, and you missed her, I don't know where y'all were, but you, you missed me uh, cleaning that AR, but you've seen that. And then you also missed me cleaning uh, a little LCP we shot this week. So I took it apart and cleaned it. Because it comes apart differently and I just want to kind of get it uh, done. And I ran something through the uh, Webley. You've seen this in a lot of videos. Actually, you've not. <laughs> John got me this about two years ago, Christmas, and uh, broke the hinge cam there on it and it was just a gunsmith for about a year a year yeah and uh anyway uh i think it's going to work with really light ammo i've been firing it some so i'm anxious to finally do a video with this thing i just fired it six times before we started here and cleaned it again and uh i didn't do a like a i don't, I don't know i have different levels of cleaning like a, maybe a hundred percent cleaning uh like if I know I'm going to be shooting a firearm in about, uh, I don't know, this week, here or sometime, I'll do a, I'll do a, like a 90% on it. Uh, and I will, got my trash bucket down here. Uh, and I'll make sure it's lubed well. And, you know, I put lube, you know, cleaner, where's my stuff and my juice, uh, in the barrel, in the chambers. And it doesn't hurt anything, you know. It doesn't hurt anything. It's in it's in fine shape. And then maybe I'll run a, a dry patch through the chambers, just so we don't have added pressure. You know, when you fire around, oh, going the wrong way, it's breakdown. And uh, you know, in the chambers and the barrel, you know, it's clean too. A uh, speck of ballistol or oil won't won't hurt it, of course. All right. But anyway, that's the old Webley. I'm looking forward to to giving y'all some history of that. And uh, it's a really, <laughs> it's such a historical firearm. And we have never done a video with it. We were all ready one day, and I had my notes in my brain and everything, and it, it just didn't work or it broke. And I thought, oh, man, I was so disappointed. But you're seeing that someday here. All right, so what I've got are all these other handguns. And when I have this many, or even if I just have four, or whatever it is, I look at the caliber, and I kind of assembly line it, okay? Kind of assembly line. What I'm doing, I, I notice there's two 44s. Maybe I'll do this first. Two 44s. Got a bunch of nines. Got a 10. 357. Okay. Why do I do that? Well, you all know if you're familiar with firearms, you've done a lot of cleaning, right? I, uh, uh, you can use same cleaning rod, same patches. Duh. Now, you don't have to do it that way, but. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant, huh? I'm sure most people do things far different than I do. One of your first uh, observations, other than how 
dumb eye up here, is where are the boar snakes? Well, I love boar snakes, and there are several brands of those now. You know, Ballastall makes one, uh, uh, Hoppies, uh, who makes the boar? That's Hoppies, isn't it? Boar snake? I don't know. There's another brand I've seen called something else. So there's at least three, there may be four or five of them. So, and I love them. I, use, I just used one on that AR-15 uh, barrel. So I use them on rifle barrels, but I, for some reason I don't, I just don't uh, use them on the handguns much. I don't know. I, it, it, I mean, if it worked a lot better for me, I would, because it is so much more convenient on a rifle barrel, a shotgun barrel, I think. I, that's almost all I use. I run those down a rifle or shotgun barrel. But on a handgun, I, I don't know, I, I just don't have a problem, you know, with patches and, and uh, you know, and, you know, patches and rod. And then I, I like these uh, ramrod things. I, I bought this. Now, they, I, they did send me some years ago when they first started up. But I bought these at uh, Royal Range. You know, people bring us machine guns sometimes. I bought a whole pack of them, so I'd have that. And I've got some random ram rods, they're called. I use those sometimes getting the crevices and cleaning the bolt on an AR-15. I just use several on that. Um, so anyway, I just let you know I buy that stuff. You know you know that Ballastall is a sponsor. Uh, so just to clarify all that, uh, and we appreciate that. Talon Grips and BudsGunShop.com. I'm not going to be shooting. I forget to thank the people that help us. I think I did forget to thank them in... Uh, I don't know, video recently sometimes, but, uh, uh, you know, budsgunshop.com, man, we love them. Uh, SDI.edu, the Snoring Desert Institute, great folks. And, uh, yeah, they, they have everything, of course, where you're cleaning, you know, uh, refurbishing firearms, uh, gunsmithing, the whole nine yards, distant learning, and, and then federal premium, we appreciate their help. So, uh, with all that said, and then again, with Ballastall, uh, this is not a Ballastall commercial because if you go back to our cleaning uh, videos, man, the very first ones like 10 years ago or longer, I don't know when we did those very first ones or any of them, it's just what I use. I've used this since 99 or 2000. I discovered it when I was uh, cowboy action shooting. I think at a match, somebody had a bunch of it for sale and they were using it, so it was great and all this. And I, so I started using it on, on those guns and then I gradually as I learned I liked it, converted basically, well, every gun I own, you know, to it. Uh, ARs, AKs, and Glocks, and muzzle loaders, and, and, you know, and everything. So anyway, I've been using it for over 20 years. All right, now it's not, uh, we don't review cleaning fluids. Why not? Because they're now a sponsor, they help us, okay? So we don't review, we don't have conflicts. We don't review anything that, uh, we don't review ammo. We don't review gun shops. We don't review uh, grips. You know, anybody that is a sponsor, that, even if we wanted to, we don't do it, right? How dumb would that, how uh, unethical and, and stupid would that be? What kind of credibility would you have, right? It's just it's like somebody getting sponsorship from a gun company and then comparing a, that gun with some other gun, you know, uh, from a different company. Like, wow, how do you do that? So anyway, enough on that. But since this one I use, and I use it liberally, and because uh, it's not toxic, and I, that's one reason I like it. You can your hands, it's not a big deal. I've already had it on my hands and been uh, all over it. Now what I do when I clean these guns is, uh, and other people probably do it much differently, because they're a lot smarter than I am, but I'll, I will, especially the revolvers, I've done that on, and I may, I'll may i do it on those two probably, but say I have a couple of uh, nine millimeters. This is a little different, I got more than I normally have. But I'll open up both Glocks, say it's two nine millimeters, or whatever they are, and I'll get the barrels out, and I'll just spray down the barrels inside the barrel, and I'll let those be soaking, and then I'll kind of work on the slide a little bit and other parts of it, you know, and then I get my ramrod, my patch, soak my patch, and and then run through both barrels, you know, kind of assembly line it because it's the same size bore. If I was using a bore snake, I'd do the same thing. You know, I'd run the bore snake down one barrel and pick up the other one, and oh, it just seems to make sense. And uh, so with revolvers, uh, like I say, I kind of spray them down. You notice, if you can tell, maybe, it's a little different when you know, we're on a tripod, but uh, uh, these are, they're sprayed inside, I don't worry. Again, it's non-toxic, so I can spray the wood. In fact, it enhances the wood. It doesn't hurt anything, you know. I, I, I don't have to baby it. I can just spray and not worry about it. Uh, you know, get the 
get the stuff in the cylinder. Let's start doing its job and, and soaking the residue loose and, and everything. Okay. Uh, this is my old 29. We shot that thing. <laughs> I've been shooting this a lot lately. Seems like it's been in like four or five different videos, and it's uh, you know it's never going to get a chance to rest. It hasn't since 1974 when I bought it new. So might as well. Uh, what did Neil Young say? Better to burn out than to rust or something. So it's uh, it's not going to rust and uh, it probably won't burn out in my lifetime. So these revolvers have been kind of soaking. So what I do next with a revolver is I get the, the worst, I hit the chamber, get a clean patch, and, and I don't know how far it will get. I'm going to uh, get good good start on things, and that's the wrong ramrod, right? That's for 9mm, 38, so where's my 44, 45, here we go. And sometimes it depends on the caliber. I've noticed that with 10mm, this 44, 45 is a little big. And uh, I'll use maybe a 38 ramrod, and I'll just put two patches on it, you know. And also, it depends on what size your patches are. And now this step, uh, for new gun owners, there's another reason this came to mind. Uh, we do have a lot of new people, new gun owners out there, and maybe you haven't uh, even shot your gun yet, much less cleaned it. But it's a messy uh, job, work. Some people wear rubber gloves, probably should. Again, this is pretty non-toxic, so it's just not as much an issue. But uh, I should, yeah. I mean, you do have lead residue and all that. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I, I've been doing this forever. I'm not any issues really, other than my my mental capacity. And uh, you know, there's a lot of junk science out there about lead. Uh, it's another discussion. But you, but you really don't want to, you know take chances you don't want to eat lead and you want to keep it away from kids and all that kind of thing you know but you know as an, as an adult uh, I think we uh, worry about it a little too much sometimes but that's that's just me I'm not a scientist I don't play one and sometimes I'll take that same patch and run it through the, the barrel as well and I know with the boar snakes that's one advantage you don't have to run anything through there uh, up the muzzle but it's brass and I'm, I'm careful about it and it's a patch covering that brass on top of that and, and like I say I just do things that have worked for me for, like, for example this this revolver 75,000 rounds at least through it and it's just as accurate as it's ever been since 1974 and I've cleaned it this way since 1974 so uh, one advantage of having been around a while and having done things a certain way is uh, I mean, you don't want to become a, a know-it-all, smart aleck uh, know-it-all that, that thinks he knows the best way on everything. But then again, if it has proven successful for me for all that time, 50 years, well, 45, whatever it is, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not probably going to change and I'm not going to listen very long to somebody when they tell me well, you know what you ought to do hickok you know it would be better uh you'll scratch the board or you should do this or you should do that uh you'll wear that gun out or you know whatever it might be i i just tend to laugh at them you know because yeah well you might be right uh in my next life i'll spend 45 years doing it your way we'll see if there's a difference how's that so you know when you're 25 you know you you don't know you haven't had that kind of experience yet and you just don't know so uh but anyway, uh, your mileage may vary. You may want to do it a different way. Okay, let's, uh, and then I'm just going to go through the same thing again. Now the clean patch. Uh, I'll tell you what I do usually when I get a clean patch after I've done it a little bit, because the cylinders tend to be uh, dirtier chambers. Really, you know, imagine that. I'll, 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 while it's clean, I'll run that one maybe through the bore. And uh, it gives me a better idea what shape the bore is in rather than running just this filthy patch through it. And so I can see I've still got crud in there. And I'll run through both. You know, again, assembly line kind of approach. And then uh, that one's not all that dirty. So I'll hit those dirty chambers with it. Okay. And you do realize whatever oil uh, cleaner you use, there's a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones. Uh, that 
once you get it relatively clean and lubed, you know, it's, it's protected. That's the main thing. And, and that's what amazes me about some people. They just don't clean their guns. And then they brag about it. You know, I haven't cleaned my Glock in six months. I've got 7,000 rounds through it and all this kind of thing. Okay, good for you. Why would you do that? You know, it's got to cause them to wear faster. And uh, if it's one you rely on, for competition or self-defense, especially, why would you do that? That's one of the things I think about. Uh, and I'm not likely relying on one of these for self-defense. I just want to protect them and have them clean. But boy, if I go out and shoot my, my Glock, that's one that I, uh, you know, I keep uh, handy on my person, uh, in the bedroom or wherever, you know, uh, even in, you know, in safe, I have uh, electronic uh, locks and I can get to any gun pretty quickly. So if it's in there in a semi-loaded condition, uh, never round in the chamber, you know, in a, around. I just uh, keep, I keep magazines loaded and quite often certain ones, but uh, it, unless it's on my person, if it's on my person, it's uh, probably hot, okay, and in a holster. But if it's not, it's probably totally unloaded. It might have a loaded magazine, okay? I mean, that's just like a universal rule with me. It's the way I operate. If I don't have time uh, to get to that gun, for one thing, it's gonna be in a lockbox or a safe anyway. So if I have time to get to it in the safe, grab it, I'm gonna have time to rack around in the chamber, okay? So if I don't, I'm in trouble, big trouble. <laughs> so that's just the way I operate, again, you operate how you want to operate. Uh, so, and the other thing, I'm probably going to move a little faster than I would normally. What I might do in the interest of time is uh, maybe just do these revolvers. I would normally do all the revolvers. And I may do a couple of the Glocks or something because uh, I just want to show you how I do it. Maybe not keep you here for the entire cleaning process. How's that? Uh, now, I'll tell you one thing I didn't do, which I was going to. I kind of forgot what I would do is uh, also I have another firearm here we used that uh, one of my faves that is 45 caliber which would use these same uh, patches and rod and everything and that is this old Colt I sprayed down so I might as well take it apart now, you don't want to get too complicated you know if you got a dozen guns maybe you could uh, get loose parts or anything like that but since this is 45, I will, uh, and this is one of my babies, my Colt single action made in 1902. So I want to take really good care of it. So I'll spray down things. And, I, and by this time in my life, I should know where the uh, worst grit gets, where it's the hardest to get off, you know, where it burns on maybe, you know, like around the uh, forcing cone or the, uh, the bushing, front of the cylinder, or just different things. So I really make sure I'm flooding <laughs> that area. It's soaking, okay? And uh, this one I'm probably gonna take apart totally and uh, do a really thorough job on it. Get my toothbrush out. These are my toothbrushes I use in the bathroom. I bring them out here and use them and then I take them back in because, you know, it's money, man. Can't waste a toothbrush. Rinse them off and use them on my teeth. Yeah. That was a joke, young people, gullible people. Okay. There are a lot of gullible people around, and uh, <laughs> we all know that. And I pay the price sometimes for things I say in video. <laughs> for the next 10 years, I, I'll see comments about, oh no, someone else fell for that. Like the one about the gun shop owner in Clarksville. Uh, when he was in the military, he asked for a special permission to take his high point to Iraq instead of the Beretta 92. He carried it in Iraq because they gave him permission. That was a joke, but a lot of people fell for that. I mean, and in fact, some people got mad about it, that uh, that I was lying and that everything else, you know, or that he was lying to me, you know, and that I fell for it and all that kind of thing. It's kind of funny. Because they are the gullible one, not me, okay? So I shouldn't do that. It's me. Yeah, this one, uh, it kind of depends on what you're doing, your purpose. And, and I have so many different firearms and, and thoughts run through my mind when I'm cleaning one. 
and I know what my intentions are, what videos are coming up, or what I'm going to be shooting next week, you know. Uh, and it's just a fact of life. I don't care how, how finicky you are about keeping your guns clean. And I'm pretty finicky. People have accused me of that. But if I'm going to shoot this gun this week, uh, I, I'm not going to worry about getting it perfectly clean. I'm not. Because I know it's going to get addressed, and then I'll clean it really well. And if I'm putting a gun away like, like this one, if I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, you know, I'm, I just might not shoot that for six months. I just know. Then I'll do an even better job on it, okay? And then, or I'll make a mental note about one like this one maybe. I'm going to clean this one pretty well, but I'm going to get it out, like I said, and I'm going to take this thing totally apart because I've shot it a fair amount this week, and I don't really shoot it that much and don't want to, 1902. Uh, so, so actually, yeah, yeah, I'll shoot this for years. I don't know, or, or I might, but I'm going to clean it as if it's going away in the safe or the lockbox. For, for maybe two years, you know. And, and so I don't want to leave crud on it or at all, or anything like that, and make sure it's oiled really well. And uh, it's just kind of things to think about, okay? And so, see, I'm using the same patch, the same uh, everything. You know, I didn't shoot black powder in it, so it's not obnoxiously dirty. And I can tell the bore's a little bit bigger. Why? Because it's 45 instead of 44. And 44 is not 44. 44 is really 43. It's 4, 4, 3, 0.431, 0.430, or point, uh, yeah, 0.429 even, okay, on the bore. So you got basically a 43 caliber uh, in, in 44s, just the way it is, okay? But a, a 45 like this, or even a double action revolver or anything there, or a 45 ACP, you know, 1911 or Glock 21, they are, uh, they use a, uh, a 452 bullet or, or maybe even a little bit bigger. So they're a true 45. So what that means is it's like two calibers bigger instead of just one. So, okay, I knew you were worried about that, wanting to know that. So uh, I didn't have any plan here except to kind of show you what I do. So I'm allowed to ramble about anything, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna clean this one pretty well. And, uh, but not, not gonna fret over every little speck. Let's get another patch or two. And I'm gonna run it through all of these. And uh, you know, get in pretty good shape. Okay, so they're gonna see some more cleaning or maybe even some more shooting. So what else? Um, like I say, there, there's a lot of great cleaning products out there. Some people like a, a really strong cleaner that uh, you use like a, I don't know, what, a bore scrubber or some kind of thing. It's really strong stuff that you gotta be careful about even getting on your bluing or nickel and different things and uh, your hands. And, uh, <coughs> and then they go back with a, an oil after that, they have to get it clean, you know. But this is a, uh, this is an all-in-one as like, like a CLP, you know, that the military uses a lot of and, and some others. So it's all kind of an all-in-one. And uh, you know, I like that aspect of it. And it, it does fine, it does fine. I, uh, it's been, you know, it's over a hundred years old. It was used in you know, Germany and all around it, it, it. You know, again, there's there's other stuff that's probably just as good, maybe better. I don't know, but this works works for me and has for 20, you know, 20 years, 21 years. So uh, uh, that's where I am with that. And uh, I can spray it down. I, it, in fact, it enhances the uh, the wood that you put it on, or plastic even. Oh, they don't really put it on a lot of plastic, but it makes grips look better. When I get a new gun or a different firearm, a revolver, you know, like this one, uh, the, the firearm just looks better once I get it cleaned and bounced off on the grips. It's just a rifle, you know, or, or anything. Because it's, uh, I use it on wood around the house. You know, it just uh, sometimes, you know, like in a cabinet or something, it's, uh, it's like a, well, it's not like polish, but it just kind of uh, soaks in and enhances the wood. Now here we got the inside of the bushing, I'm gonna hit that. 
too much cleaning really for uh, I guess a cleaning video it gets so many different things out but when it gets you the across the concept of, of what I do as much as anything and uh, how I machine or not machine gun but I assembly line things and let me run another down that barrel on, on this one and get it out of the way it's pretty clean Wonder how many times that's been clean since 1902. And I'll use a toothbrush if you haven't seen that uh, up here around the forcing cone. Whoa! Uh, I'll uh, sometimes a stiff one and sometimes just a regular old toothbrush, depending on what it is. And there are places where you want kind of a, uh, a brass brush or a bronze brush. And I've got one of those out here. I use that on some of the AR stuff. Okay, and get all the little crevices. There we go. Wipe it down in there. It's funny watching some of the Western, you know, Gunsmoke uh, with James Arnest. You've maybe seen that. It, it's interesting. I, I, I think of several times I've been watching that, and uh, Matt Dillon will be sitting there cleaning his Colt. And it, it's so realistic, generally. He'll have maybe the cylinder out uh, or not, and uh, you know he's wiping it down, doing kind of the stuff that I'm doing, running a rod. And then he'll he'll put the uh, cylinder back in. So it's it's it's, it's uh, refreshing to see uh, you know on, in Hollywood somebody actually uh, you know messing with a firearm, a real one, you know, and uh, and knowing what to do with it. Uh, quite often you don't, as I point out in some of the videos. I think I did it when we shot this one this week, that uh, so often when uh, they're trying to get the cases out, it's so obvious they've never fired one of these things and used it much. You don't know, know how to use gravity and hold the gun when they're ejecting the cases and just really awkward. Because uh, they're actors. They're not cowboys, real cowboys like me, right? So that one's in pretty good shape. I've got all my socks piled up over there, gun socks. And I don't know these, you know, well, let me go ahead. I mean, if you're in a hurry, you shouldn't be here anyway, right? Uh, so let's see how we are on, on these. We're in pretty good shape. And, you know, with your rags and everything, uh, you know, it makes sense, doesn't it? You just, like this one's really dirty, this paper towel. <laughs> but the guns are still pretty dirty. And so it doesn't matter. You know, you sort of get it all down in different, at different levels of, of clean you know, together. And as it gets a little bit cleaner, you want a new rag or a, a new paper towel, or you're just smearing the same dirt around on it, right? Now, you notice I don't have the, uh, uh, not the rug, but the skin that we normally have on the table. That's a nice uh, uh, cowhide, isn't it? It's a Brazilian cowhide. I love the looks of that and the color. That's why I bought it. And I don't want to get oil all over it and crud, okay? So I don't even, sometimes even when we're shooting a muzzle loader, I'm a little reluctant to have it out here, but I do. And, uh, you know, so definitely when I'm doing this, because on the wood, I don't even have to think about it uh, at all. Don't think about it. Just go ahead and, and make a mess. Whatever I get on the wood does not matter at all. Okay. Some of, I think we did an FAQ video on that because a lot of people have asked, do you leave those skins out or whatever that is, that height on the tables? And, no, of course not. Just bring them out for the video, just for you all. You're worth it. You're worth it. Make sure we're still recording you, yeah. okay? Uh, don't let me ignore you. Now, I also, uh, when I'm doing this, there's a screwdriver, I'll check screws on revolvers and make sure and I'm cleaning them that you know, because some on you know, double action revolvers is generally not an issue, but I like to check them anyway. Yep, they're all still tight. The grip screws will loosen up. That's about it. Uh, generally speaking, on double action, unless it's a Python, <laughs> a 2020 Python, right? Now, apparently, they're fixing that. Uh, oh, we've got that one back, and uh, seems okay because we'll do a video we're trying we're, we're hoping to get a four and a quarter in before we do a video do a chapter two but i don't know if that's going to happen uh i was asking uh, my folks at buds about that and they they say they haven't even seen any six inch pythons i don't know what's 
the, the deal and just not seeing them. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, let me know if you guys, if anybody's bought some of them or something in the last week or you're seeing them in stores or, or anything. Of course, we're not in many stores these days, right? So we're all kind of hiding out at the house for the most part. So that was another thing I thought about. Uh, might be a good time to do a cleaning. Since I have all these guns that need cleaning, that uh, do another cleaning video, something uh, that might be helpful to you. Okay. And again, I don't mind cleaning. Many you folks have been around a while, heard me say this. Now this is a bit of a job. You know, I've already cleaned a couple of guns before y'all got here, three really. And I've got all these to do. And I'm not sure how long I'll make you stay, but uh, I generally don't mind cleaning guns. You know, if I have the time and, and this is a great place to do it. You know? Just, just right here. I don't have to worry about anything in the way and other than having more than I want to do right now. But, uh, you know, it's just it's a great place to do it. So, I'll tell you what, these are in pretty, pretty good shape. I'm going to run one more patch through there. And I'll be satisfied with that. I do believe. Okay. Now, what I will do before I, like, pull this gun out to shoot it, you might notice... Uh, that uh, some of you folks with a lot of experience, if I run some oil through this cylinder, these chambers, and if I put it away, you might go, oh, now, Hickok, you're going to get uh, excessive pressure if you have oil in those chambers when you fire that gun. Well, I'm not going to leave oil dripping in there, but you know, it may be a little damp. I would figure that's better, you know, really. Uh, cause I mean, it may be a year before I shoot this again or more. That's good. I know it's in good shape with that in there. And I'll just run a dry patch before I shoot it the next time, okay? Because you want to check your gun anyway. I, I always look down the barrel and, you know, and I'll run a patch through there and then bring it out and shoot it, okay? So that's in pretty good shape. That's a beautiful, uh, uh, yeah, four, 629-4 that you've seen recently, fairly recently. Oh, yeah, that is, that is a beauty, 44 mag. All right. So the 44 mags are ready to put away. The 380 LCP, uh, the Webley, the Colt 45. Yeah, it's pretty good shape. And these 357s, I, I do those exactly like you just saw me do the 44s. So I'll, I'll say that and probably do those off camera. Uh, this is a 686-1 uh, and uh, you know, same deal. Uh, I might do a little bit while I'm doing the 9 millimeters because guess what? I'm using the same rod, you know, it's in terms of uh, assembly line, assembly line, not lying, right? <laughs> I will, uh, you know, have the same situation, the same patch, same rod, you know, run through both of them. With revolvers, you know, you get, you know, some crud up there around the forcing cone. I always like to toothbrush that. Now with stainless revolvers, some people obsess more than I do. They want to get everything off of them because it shows up. It's funny, that same person could have a blue, an old blue revolver like this, a 586, and they wouldn't obsess and rub and grind as much. They got the same dirt on there, the same carbon, but it shows up more on stainless, like the front of the cylinder. You know, some people take, uh, what's it called? Uh, well, Flitz will do it, and there's some other products you can put on the front of the cylinder and rub really hard and you can make it look like brand new, like it's never been fired. But that burn and carbon, that's just, you're just gonna have that. You know, you shoot six times, it's gonna look just like that. You know, so I, as long as there's nothing packed on there, I usually don't worry about that, you know. Now maybe if I was gonna trade the gun or sell it, I might, you know, hit it really well with that. Or if you're gonna post it on an auction and sell it, you know, you try to make it look new. But no, nah, I don't worry about that. Your blue gun has just as much uh, carbon around the front of the chambers, okay? If not more, you just don't see it, okay? It doesn't show up as much. And I'll get the uh, <clears throat> GP100, okay? There we go. Shot by, here you can tell, we <laughs> we've had a big time this week. And, uh, and we didn't go out of the way. It's not like, uh, you know, we made our commitment to do a video every day, post a video every day. Like I say, we had some videos and we had a lot of uh, videos we wanted to make. The weather's nice. 
So it's not like we've been, oh my gosh, what, what, what are we going to do? We told them we'd do a video every day. Oh my gosh, John. Uh, you think they'd be interested in watching me mow the grass, you know, or uh, uh, polish my bow or, you know, no, I've got a long list of videos that we want to do guns and then both uh, ideas and videos. And we've got, uh, you know, a bunch of series where we want to continue. Uh, we've got like the armed in series. Uh, we have, wow, so many years that we want to do there of those and just, just different things and guns continually coming and going. I've got guns you haven't seen and uh, we've got so many uh, guns I want to get out again you've not seen but once maybe and all that sort of thing. So, you know, it's never an issue. It is a time issue. It is a time issue. I mean, I want to have a life and, and, and still, uh, well, this is a lot of my life, but I want to have an, uh, an, the other part of my life and then enjoy making the videos. If you let something dominate every aspect of your life, then you don't enjoy it as much. And uh, it's the only way I'll continue doing this is if I enjoy it. I saw somebody there. Okay. Uh, all right. So now I've not done anything in the chambers, right? You watched me. Okay. Now there's probably somebody, some trolls watching, looking for a, an opening, something I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Isn't that what trolls and haters do? <laughs> they, uh, they lurk and watch for any little thing uh, that they can find to hammer you about. Kind of like uh, people of the uh, uh, opposing political party. If you're watching uh, somebody make a speech, that, that's all you care. You don't care about what they say. If they have any good ideas, you're just listening for something that you can hang uh, criticism on, right? But uh, like I said, uh, everybody does it differently. I'm, uh, I'm going to hit these just briefly, and then I'm up. Get into those Glocks, all right? I think they're all Glocks. No, one of them's a uh, SIG. But they're all nine, yeah, all nines. I think, uh, you'll see, uh, you know, you folks that watch all the videos, which many of you probably do if you're here watching this boring thing. And uh, you'll, you'll see when these videos come out. I have a lot of guns on the table for a specific reason. And she several of them. I had more than this on the table. These are just the ones that we have fired okay, in the videos. All right. Revolvers uh, probably get uh, maybe a little dirtier, so I kind of got a head start on these two than, you know, say a Glock, uh, unless you shoot an awfully lot, but uh, they all get dirty if you shoot them much. All right, is there anything I'm forgetting about as I do this? Because uh, I, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this. I just knew I needed to do this, and I thought I'd bring you all in. And one reason I wanted to get these kind of, these, these guns, these revolvers sort of done, they're just messier in a lot of ways, okay? I make them messier, and I don't have to really worry about it. Like the grip, it doesn't matter if my hands are soaked with oil and stuff. It doesn't matter because it's, if anything, it's good for the grips. There's nothing on this firearm that it will hurt. It just enhances it, basically, okay? And again, I don't mean to sound like a battle stall ad. Lots of good cleaners. I, I just happen to use this one and, and like it. And, uh, and they like us, which is good. Now, rubber, I, I don't necessarily like to get a lot on soft rubber, but uh, so I'll put that there. All right, now, what I like to do before I start messing with my Glocks, I don't like to, I don't know about you, but I don't like to get oil on my, uh, well, no matter what it is, an M&P or a Ruger or any of my polymer pistol grips where I hold them, yeah, I don't want, I don't want oily, you know, at all, because the grip is so important, okay? So, so I'm more careful at this point. Get rid of that, it's dirty, dirty, dirty. And I, I don't, well, I've got, I forgot, I've got some uh, actually hand sanitizer cleaner. I think my wife made this one. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking for hand sanitizer, aren't we, these days? And uh, I was lucky. We had some, and right when this shortage began, we were starting to realize, uh-oh, it's hard to find hand sanitizer. I went on Amazon, and I found uh, some, like five containers of that stuff, uh, just 10 ounces a piece, I think. But it's nice, and I ordered it. It was like a month getting here almost. It was uh, it said it'd be over a month, but it, it actually got here the other day. It was a miracle because uh, that was the end of that. I just couldn't get it again. But when we tried to make some, because I've got some alcohol. I keep alcohol in the bar and keep it around. And it didn't come out so well. 
waited and waited for the aloe to come and then so we can make it and then it's not as easy uh, as it's supposed to be. So what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm not worried about my hands being dirty. I just don't want oil on them when I start picking up these glocks. Okay, and that, that is one of the issues here with this many. Uh, normally I can clean a couple without uh, getting the grips oily. You know, and I've got towel and grips on three or four of these and I don't want to get that oily. Although, what you can do, and I've done it many times, if I get the grip oily, even the towel and grips or whatever, I'll put some alcohol, get an alcohol rag or pad, and I guess this stuff would work. And I'll just wipe it off and, you know, it gets rid of the grease on it. Because when I pick up that Glock, whether I've got towel and grips on or not, I don't, I want friction. You know, I don't want grease. I don't want grease. Okay. And uh, so that's important. Because once I get them broken down, I don't really have to deal that much with the, the frame. Okay, so we shot the Glock 19. You haven't seen this one in a while, have you? Sorry, the Glock 26. This is my old Glock 26. Well, I used to, I've shot this a lot. I used to carry this a lot. Uh, competed in GSSF matches uh, for two, three, or four years. And IDPA, this was this was my gun. And uh, and I, I think I told y'all probably, I don't know if it's a video with this or, or when, but I, I was shooting the GSSF matches around, mostly up in Lexington, Kentucky. And, uh, and I would come in, like and they have different classes of, subcompact is a class, of course. And I was carrying subcompact, this is what I carry, so I wanted to compete in that class. That's really all I did. I, I'd compete in other classes, but I'd use this gun. And, and I wanted to win subcompact. And, uh, oh man, I come in like third, I think maybe even second one year. Maybe the first year was, I was a Glock 27. I think I was fourth or fifth, I don't know. This was back, when was it, like 90, mid 90s? I don't know, late 90s, I guess, 2000 maybe, I don't, yeah, yeah, it was 2000, after 2000, 2001 or two or three, somewhere along in there, I guess. But, but I, I just was, uh, dedicated, I wanted to win, you know, that, that category, uh, subcompact, man, this is my gun, I'm a Glocker, and I shoot a lot, I, you know, I should have a chance to win, at least, uh, and I finally won, in whatever it was, 2001 or two or something, and uh, that's the last time, okay, I did it, you know, uh, but it was this gun, and uh, I bought this thing used, in fact, people worry about buying used guns, I haven't even done anything to it, same sights and everything, and, uh, and uh, but, they're great little shooters, great little shooters. So what I do back to cleaning, you know, you gotta watch me. I get a gun in my hand. There's history with several <laughs> of these firearms, right? History with, uh, let's see what, how, how long I'm boring, yeah, pretty long. Uh, you know, like the old Colts, and I talk about that in the video, the Smith and Wessons, wow, yeah, so. Okay, so I'm cleaning, okay. Back on track, back on track. So. Maybe I'll just do like two or three here and then show you. Okay, so I'll take a Glock and these are nine millimeter. So what's the dirtiest part? The barrel, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll get a couple of them apart. Uh, gosh, what do I need to clean? I'll tell you what I need to clean my, my pride and joy uh, Glock 19. I even had the loaded mag back in it in case I need it. This is uh, one of my carry guns. I'll open it up. And I, you know, keep all the parts together. All right. Maybe I'll do three of them. Let's also do the SIG, okay? Uh, P365. Let's lock it back. Take it apart. Okay. I keep all the parts together. I don't know if you can see all that or not. And uh, spring, slide, and barrel. All right. And since that's the dirtiest part, the most critical, that chamber, you know, make sure that's clean. You, you don't remember, no, I was, uh, one of the local deputies stopped by here a couple hours ago, dropped by the county, and we were talking about guns and matching that, different things, and he, he said, yeah, he's, uh, I think I told him I was going to do this video. And uh, he, uh, he said, yeah, if I shoot my gun one time, I've got to clean it, you know, and I said, yep, you should. You just don't know if it's your carry gun, which is what he was talking about. And it's one of your, your defensive firearms. You don't know, or even a hunting firearm. You pay a lot to go hunting somewhere. And the first shot, there's a problem, you know, with the round, we'll go in the chamber fully or something. 
Um, but you don't know, it's rare that it happens, even if you fire 100 rounds or 1,000 maybe, in a lot of different firearms, but it, you know, Murphy's always watching, and that would be the one time you fire just a couple of shots or one magazine, and that's the one time that a piece of lead or a piece of copper or brass, the little circle of it, you've seen those little slivers maybe, uh, if you shoot much, it gets stuck, it comes off and gets stuck in the chamber. It's in the chamber and you don't even know it. And it prevents the next round from fully going into battery just enough to where you get a click when you pull a trigger or something, you know, or it won't go into battery. Uh, just Murphy's always ready for us, you know, so there's enough things that could go wrong uh, so you don't want to buy trouble. It's simple enough, keep your gun clean, all right? So I clean the barrels. Uh, that's where the crud is. I usually run the same one through all three of them. Again, the reason I kind of assembly line it, you know. Got the same rod, same dirty patch, get the worst of it out. They didn't really shoot any of these all that much. Okay, then I get a cleaner patch. Another clean patch. Do it again. And I'll tell you, time is your friend, too. Like I say, if you know you're going to be cleaning your guns later, and, and if you can, just take them apart and spray them down. You know, that just makes it come off so much easier. Whatever kind of carbon and crud you have, depending on how dirty they are, just, just suck them. Suck them down. And a lot of people do it differently. Uh, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not sponsored by cleaning uh, uh, material. And, but uh, I don't waste it, but I don't, I don't I'm... Uh, I'm not hesitant to, to spray it, you know, and uh, and use it. So, you know, I just, that's just one thing uh, you can make sure is, is right. You've got that barrel clean, that chamber clean. Clean as it can be, spick and span, all right? That round going in there. For one thing, the round could have a slight imperfection. Maybe, even it's a factory ammo, maybe, which is kind of rare. But, uh, you know, what if a piece of brass is just slightly oversized or something? And uh, then you also have even a little bit of grit in that chamber. You know, that's not a good combination, right? So, just a word to the wise. It could be a life and death situation. Ah, I ended up fold it up there a little bit. All right, so those barrels. Well, a clean patch or two, and they're going to be in good shape, all right? And uh, so, yeah, I won't clean those other two, I guess, yeah. They're nine millimeters, so I'll just cycle them through like these two. I'll do exactly the same thing. One of them is a Glock 17, which is a key firearm in my house. And then a 10 millimeter, I'll do the same way. I'll clean those two together. The difference is, as I clean the bore of the 10 millimeter, it's a Glock uh, 20, is I'll put two patches on every time. Well, it's uh, and it, and it just about the right friction. Yeah, well, I think that 45 patch, 44, 45, is a little big uh, for my patches. And so I just double up on the nine millimeter. It takes care of that, all right? Now the thing, uh, I, I tell you what, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this because it's, it's really a better approach. I'm gonna go ahead and run a clean patch, a dry patch through here, both all these barrels. That's yeah, pretty good. And you gotta run a lot of patches for it to look like, uh, you know, to be totally clean, like the china in your grandmother's cupboard or something. Okay, so that's good. That's the barrel to the SIG. And uh, I'll use that same patch, the Glock. Mm, this is a, yeah, the Glock 19 barrel, because it's longer. It's longer. And this is a key gun. This is one of my carry guns. So I've got the night sights on it, uh, the better sights. Uh, and I have no problem with Glock sights. Never had trouble with the polymer sights. A lot of people curse them. They've always worked fine for me for since uh, the 80s, late 80s, mid 80s, you know. But uh, just with well, some sights, you can get a little different sight picture that you might like better. And plus, you can get night sights. Okay. I'm going to run out, get another clean patch dry patch. Again, it's a carry gun. Make sure the chamber is not only clean, but it's dry. There we go. All right. Well, and that's the gun I shoot occasionally. I shoot the uh, carry ammo in it occasionally, in fact. So, I want it clean, but you know, it doesn't have to be like 
perfect, perfect. All right, now the Glock 26. I may not shoot that 26 in a long time. I don't know, so let me get it clean. Boy, it's seen a lot of action. You can tell by looking at that barrel and the gun. It's always worked. Much to the uh, <laughs> disappointment of the Glock haters, right? It's a cool thing. We're living in good times. A lot of great guns that work. Okay. So the barrels are clean. Now, why would I go ahead and get all the barrels pretty much ready to put back in before I do the little bit of brushing or whatever on the slides? Well, for one thing, I like to get the, the most oily work done because with what I'm going to do now, I'm not really going to get much oil you know, on my hands. So I'm going to even take some of that off and clean my hands a little bit here because I'm going to be messing maybe with the grip a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll look at the grip and this depends on how much you have fired them. I didn't really fire any of these that much. Uh, just a quick demo kind of thing. But I like to look at the uh, the lower in there and I'll take a clean toothbrush or one of these. A lot of people you know, claim, don't ever use a toothbrush. You get the a lot of pieces down. They, they tend to work okay, as long as you watch it. And I'll just make sure if it, you know, they were clean in there, no problem. You know, then I'll, uh, it was already lubed. I didn't really uh, you know, have to do much more lubing. And I don't lube them much. I get criticized for not lubing Glocks enough even. But uh, I just get a drop. There you know. So that's my Glock 19. It's in good shape, that part of it. The slide should not be very dirty. And this is still a clean toothbrush. So I run it up to here. Sometimes I want a stiffer one for that. So I get one of these babies. They're a little bit stiffer. Again, it wasn't fired very much, so I don't even need to think about lube cleaner on this part of it. Look at the bottom of that, you know, the firing uh, pin block and everything. Make sure that's all clear. Yeah, looks good. And uh, so that gun really is ready to, to go back together if I just knew how to do it. All right, that way I get these parts out of my face, out of the way. I don't confuse it and put the Wrong parts on the wrong gun. There it is, my carry gun. All right, my Glock. I might take a clean towel or something and make sure there's no oil, you know, on that thing. And uh, I think I even had a loaded mag, so the thing is ready. All right, Glock 19. And then uh, same over here. I got the barrel ready. The uh, let's see, I fired this. Yeah, I fired a, a magazine. It's all I fired. The same thing. I look at the slide firing pin and everything that's it didn't get I didn't shoot enough to get really dirty it's like it's in good shape uh, not dirty really make sure it's lubed there's rails just a little bit on the rails and the uh, connector is a little bit now sometimes I'll uh, actually take the slide too, put a drop very carefully in a slide groove. Yeah, like that. All right, back together. Okay. What is your problem here? Do I need a new uh, spring or something? There we go. Didn't get that down all the way. And somehow a cock down. There we go. You see that thing is really, really worn. <laughs> all right, so there's my Glock uh, 26. And I'll do the same with the uh, the P365 here. Again, I don't want to keep you guys for two hours, but uh, I should probably kind of sum it up here and, and before I complete the rest of these. I just have two more to clean, right? Well. What I'll do is, uh, like I said, I will, I'll do the Glock 20 and the uh, Glock 17 together using that double patch, like I said, and I'll also run patches. I kind of cleaned these two revolvers uh, pretty well, except for the barrel and the chambers and uh, very, like a finished job. So as I do the barrels on those, I'll do the barrel and the chambers again on, on those and uh, all together. 
and you know that'll be kind of it. So I mean, it's a pretty big project of cleaning. Uh, I, I was out here messing with some of them for probably an hour before y'all got here, and uh, you know I don't know, I might have done a little faster if y'all hadn't been here looking over my shoulder, but I thought why not? And uh, I don't know if it's any use to you. Is there anything else that I, I, I didn't like prepare any really thoughts or notes or anything at all? Uh, things I wanted to be sure to say. Just wanted to kind of show you how, how I do it. And uh, and again, I don't have trouble with my firearms, as you know. It's rare that we have a malfunction or have a problem, you know, with, with my guns <laughs> and most guns that come through here. Uh, I try to make sure they're lubed. And uh, I, I over clean. And one thing we do is uh, it, we don't do torture tests. So if we get a firearm in and I'll shoot it and test it and just shoot it some in a couple, three different days, maybe and mess with it, see what I think about it. And does it function okay? And it seems like it's, you know, it's great. And they're good to go. Fire 100, 200 rounds and no malfunctions. Clean it, lube it, shoot it some more, clean it. You know, this thing's fine. Uh, so unless you're doing a thousand round test or something, you know, to me that's enough. It gives you a pretty good idea and you, you see how they're working for other people. But, uh, but before I do a video with it, uh, I'll typically take it in to the barn and I'll clean it again. Just, just make sure it's clean, just cursory cleaning, you know, run it past through the bore and just kind of what I do with these and make sure it's lube because I want consistency in a firearm we're doing. If we get a Ruger, or a, an m &P or something in next week and we're going to do a video on it and I just shoot it a bunch for about a week and it gets really dirty and then we do a video I don't know I never know if we have a malfunction maybe it was just because I didn't really clean it like I normally do or just some dirt got in it uh, from one round I fired yeah I don't know just like to keep it consistent okay uh, really show you and myself how this firearm operates if it's in good shape and it's clean Okay. I mean, if we wanted to have the Dirty Gun Channel, we could do that, I guess, <laughs> or have a series. Uh, every gun we look at and review has to have been fired 800 times without cleaning or something. And then we just do whatever. <laughs> I mean, but you know, that's, that, that's not what we're really about. So anyway, that's the consistency, lube and clean. Uh, it's good to keep them clean. And it's, it's really enjoyable, I, you know, uh, just, uh, uh, schedule some time uh, when you're not, you know, uh, I don't know, rushed with 14 other things maybe. Now, if you've got to get these two guns clean, you got to be somewhere or another, then maybe it's not fun. But if you can schedule, I mean, they won't they won't deteriorate and fall apart, you know, in a day or anything. But just, just look ahead and see when you can have some time. Uh, some quality, we can spend some quality time with your firearm, you know, and not be rushed. Put some music, I normally would have some music on or be playing a video you know, where's my phone? Yeah, I would have a yeah, maybe a, a video going or some music or something. Uh, you know, maybe a, a Ten Outdoors Nine video just to make myself feel smarter or something like that, or a Paul Harrell video which would make me feel dumber, right? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. But uh, so you know, just just to enjoy it uh because it's it's really part of the hobby it's like reloading you know how many people have you seen make you may not want to do it it may not be your cup of tea but how many people have you seen comment about they got into hand loading and they enjoy that as much as shooting and, and they end up reloading all these rounds and they oh i gotta have some more brass i've seen some comments like that lately where everybody's homebound they're reloading all their brass you know <laughs> catching up on reloading they can't shoot so they're reloading everything uh, but it's kind of the way it is. It gets, it's addictive and uh, it's fun to do. And, and, and cleaning is, is not a, necessarily a chore. It can be difficult with some firearms and maybe something you don't look as forward to, like with muzzle loaders. But, uh, you know, if, if it's a firearm that you like and you enjoy shooting, you really, if you're a true gun guy, gun person, I mean, I mean you should enjoy uh, getting that thing back in, in good condition and taking it apart. You learn more about how they operate, uh, you know, by taking them apart. And even though it's just usually field stripping, but sometimes you go beyond that, you know, so anyway, 
it's not a, a, a labor, it's kind of a labor of love. And uh, it's funny, you know, how could I not enjoy any time you are, you are messing with a fine firearm, taking it apart, cleaning it, oiling it, it's, uh, it's just part of the enjoyment to me of the hobby. It, it really is. So don't be grudged the days, the hours you have to spend cleaning a firearm. Now, I don't know if assembly lining like I'm doing is something you even care about or even need to care about. You may have one nine millimeter anyway or one forty four, uh, but uh, it's just uh, a, a way I'm doing it since I have so many. Uh, normally, I'm just cleaning one or two firearms and, uh, and that's it. But I really had my work cut out for me here. I, I really did. And we do a video occasionally where it, it really is a job, you know, like those U.S. handgun, military handguns all through history. Whew rifles and whenever we do a video like that, it, uh, it, it creates a lot of work, doesn't it? And you either have to do it, like, you know, it's late at night or, uh, or the next day, you know, I mean, you've got to get to it. You don't want to put it off too long. So, and that's more important, of course, if it's your carry gun, if it's an offensive handgun or shotgun or whatever it is. And if you don't have a lot of firearms, uh, there's a good chance it might be one of those. You might have a good shotgun, and uh, I mean, you might be very well armed. You've got a couple of handguns, you got a shotgun, you got a rifle, an AR or something, or whatever it is, bolt gun you hunt with. You know, uh, it's important maybe for all of your guns to be in working order at all times. You don't know when you might want to use one or need it. You know, so uh, I don't know. I just don't sleep well at night if I know that one of my key firearms is really dirty that I might need, right? <laughs> so anyway, I hope you're doing okay, uh, you know, in this uh, shutdown you know, that we're sort of involved in. And uh, maybe uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is a way you can spend a little time uh, watching me uh, mess with my firearms and clean them totally differently than you do using totally different methods, solutions, uh, rags and patches. You know, you, you might really, uh, it's like most things. There might be 10 or 20 absolutely correct, great ways to do what I just did, you know? And I just do it one way. That's just the way I do it. And a lot of people use spore snake type things on handguns and they use different lube. They, uh, I don't know. They, I don't know what all else they do. They may, they may uh, work on each one a lot harder, and, and I do too. Uh, what, if I feel like it's not really, really clean, and if it's a special firearm, and that's one thing I do. in like in winter or sometime when it's kind of downtime and we're not uh, doing a lot of videos or something, I will kind of just uh, I, I kind of know the condition of all the firearms. And I will, it will occur to me, and I will think, I'll kind of look through the list and be thinking about them. You know what? Uh, do I have anything that needs a really serious cleaning? You know, uh, and I'll, I'll think about my special firearms first. You know, like this Model 29. If I shot that, did I do a 100% clean job on that? I, said, I cleaned it, but, uh, you know, I think uh, I don't have anything else to do this morning. I'm going to go out, put some music on, and I'm going to just clean that again really well. And I'll do that with a 1911 or something. And I'll have to admit, often it's just a firearm I really like. I enjoy taking it apart and getting it so clean, literally you can't find a speck of brown in there anywhere. Okay, you know, so uh, I like to do that with really uh, historic firearms, historical firearms and, and special firearms. And I keep them all clean. So anyway, you've been asking for cleaning videos. <laughs> so you just got probably an hour, more than an hour of cleaning, okay? And uh, uh, if you hung around for this whole thing, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're pretty sick, but I uh, appreciate your support and, and watching. Really do appreciate y'all supporting the people that support us. And uh, it's great to be able to do this and to bring it to you, because I would be doing it anyway, basically. The only difference is there wouldn't be a camera and maybe I wouldn't, well, that was smart, I almost said. And I wouldn't be doing videos. Yeah, if there's no camera, I wouldn't be doing videos. I would, uh, I would be more on my own schedule, but I would be bringing these firearms out and shooting them when I was in the mood, which is pretty often, you know. And uh, that's kind of been the, the, the thing since we started this. You know, for new people, we've talked about this and 
you know, we, we had no marketing plan, you know, or anything like that. It just came out and I decided to post something for fun and, and uh, did a couple of videos and some people thought they were good for some reason or they enjoyed them. Well, we do another one we were gonna do 15 videos. I think it's what we had that we could do, a lever gun video, a bolt action video, and that was gonna, that's all we were gonna do, you know? And then we realized, well, I think there, John said, there, you know, there's people doing a video on one gun. I said, really? He said, we were, I didn't really know who else was doing this or if anybody was. And I said, well, I guess you could do a video on one gun. That wouldn't be very interesting, would it? You know, or whatever. And, and, and I had, you know, a fair number of guns. So we, we did a few more and whatever. It's like almost a year before YouTube contacted us and wanted to know if we wanted to be partners. I said, what? What's that involved? You know, and you could actually have ads and you could make a few dollars. Really? So again, I remind you that not to pat ourselves on the back, but we started, we didn't start doing this to make a business. Didn't even know it could be a business at all, you know, for almost a year. And then it was just a few dollars. And, and so that's sort of how it all came about. And as it grew and grew and with bigger, bigger numbers and everybody contacting us under the sun, wanting us to, to show this and do this and we'll pay you this, we'll give you this, we'll give you this gun, give you these guns, we'll pay you, you know, do video on this and that and that. We, we, we began to realize, wow, you know, this is, could be kind of a business, you know, we can keep doing what we're doing, but we need to get it under control and make sure we don't accept any of those, those offers that would uh, put us in conflict with what, what we're doing. You know, we're just going to look at guns, give honest opinions. And so we stayed away from gun companies, never taken a penny, you know, from a gun company. And that's, that's just, you know, what we do. And, uh, so, I mean, that's just how it evolved, you know, and, and of course, because we have almost 5 million subscribers now, you know, we have uh, some, some nice sponsors and, you know, it's, it's great, you know, and there's, there's people that don't like that. They resent us. They think we should have a YouTube channel like they do or their sister does or something and, and be true to YouTube or something or to social media. I don't know, but uh, we, we make shooting videos and uh, those are the very people, as I've said before, if they had the viewership we had, they'd probably have that gong painted orange with Home Depot written on it and, all these places would have Lowe's and, and Chevrolet on every other target and all this, you know, they'd, they'd be like the, the ultimate NASCAR uh, sponsorship uh, <laughs> kind of thing, you know. So we try to keep it reasonable and make it uh, worthwhile and, and, and not uh, adulterate what we do, you know, and uh, definitely uh, we're always, you know, as honest as we can be, you know. I mean, we, we may not always be right, but we give you our honest opinions about firearms. And it's funny to see comments. I saw one a little bit ago this afternoon. If, if I make fun or if I say something negative about a gun you like, this GP100 or something at all, then then uh, some people want to trash me, you know, by this terrible review or something. If I say anything negative because it's their favorite gun, and uh, the opposite of that is true too. So that's just the way it is. We, we hear the things. So it, we pay a price for being honest. For, you know, I mean, I have my biases, but I, you know, I say what I think about every firearm because, again, you know, Budge doesn't care what we think about the guns they send us. And so uh, we can be totally honest. And, uh, and so we offend people if we like this gun, don't like that one as much or, or whatever. But try to be objective about it. Even if it's a gun, I wouldn't buy. You know, so I don't have time to get off on all of that. I've kept you all long enough. So anyway, that's how I, I approached it today. And it's kind of what I did. I got some more cleaning to do, so I do need to make you all go away. I don't think you want a two-hour video, so I've got uh, some more guns to clean here, and then I've got to pack them away and try to remember where, which safe they go in, all that sort of thing. And uh, I'm glad you came by. And if you've been here this long, whew, man, you're uh, you're special. You're uh, you're special. So we appreciate it. I think I've got the remote here somewhere. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn you off. I'm gonna let you get back to whatever you were doing. Uh, maybe you were cleaning guns. Lordy, you had time to clean all your guns, didn't you, while I was cleaning mine. So uh, I will see you. I hope you uh, enjoy this week's Sunday shoot-around. And, uh, you know, the gosh, what all that post, the uh, Mauser, Swedish Mauser, and, you know, different things. So, uh, you know, stay safe, and hopefully you stay healthy, and hopefully I stay healthy. And I'll, I'll see you uh, this Sunday in the Sunday shoot-around. Again, uh, those are always timely because I'm right there. It's Sunday. And just like this, you know, we're, we're in the same week. I'll see you in a few days on Sunday.
All right. Some videos were done a few weeks ago. You know, others are very timely, like this one. Okay. So y'all take care. Life is good.